All right, guys, I finally finished Colby's Swordfish Mount. This thing came out absolutely awesome. I had only attempted one of these one time. Uh, it, was, it was one of my own. I didn't really try that hard. I kind of gave up right away just, just seeing how different it was uh, from, from any other fish that I've done. And, uh, but this one, I, this one is super special. It's the biggest swordfish that we know of that's been caught out of, out of a kayak. So super, super cool. I really wanted to make sure I did this one um, perfectly. And it is just awesome looking. Kind of wish I had it for myself. So this one was actually a lot different than uh, what I've what I've done in the past. So this, it's it's obviously much bigger than any like Kubera head or or uh, kingfish like I'm used to doing. Um, so I had to improvise on the uh, the type of container that I uh, cook had to cook it in. Uh, I ended up using making a homemade heating element and putting it in a big plastic container. Um, just heat it up real slow. It ended up working perfectly. Just took a uh, took a little bit longer than normal, but I don't want it, don't want to boil it because uh, that tends to weaken the weaken the bones. You don't really want to bring it to a boil, but you want to be able to cook all the meat out. Uh, so that's what I did with this. It, it ended up taking like five hours to to actually cook it all off. But I got all the meat off, and it came into a bunch of different pieces that I didn't really recognize because um, it's it's such a different type of of head than than I'm used to. So. Uh, I made sure I took pictures and videoed me taking it apart and cleaning up everything and made sure I kept track of all the all the important pieces. Then right after taking all the bones apart and cleaning them, uh, I soaked them in hydrogen peroxide like I normally do with all the other ones. And I did it for about a day, took it out, soaked it in Dawn dish soap for about three days, then took it out and I noticed that it was, you could tell that there was still some oil in it so I ended up uh, soaking it in acetone for about a month. I put it in a, in a big bucket I, I had, about a five gallon bucket full of acetone. Um, all the pieces fit in there pretty pretty easily because they were all small. And then I made a, um, a tube out of a PVC pipe, capped both ends, filled it with acetone, and put the bill inside. Um, and then I went out back over to Los Buzos and I ran a couple trips while I, while I was here soaking. I got back, let it all dry out, put in hydrogen peroxide again, and it is uh, as wide as it could possibly be. Super, super light. The thing probably only weighs like, I would say, three pounds tops. Um, super, super light. And you can tell all the moisture's out, all the oil's out. Doesn't smell at all. You can't, like some of my other ones, you can generally smell them a little bit, but this one, not, no smell whatsoever. I'll let you get a closer look at it here. All right, as you can see, really really white the bill has a little bit a few little marks on it that's just because of the coloring of the of the bill but basically all totally white it has no hot glue it's only super glue put together so i put it together piece by piece um took me probably about an hour a day for maybe three weeks once i got everything cleaned up um just to put the pieces in because you gotta be super super particular you got to know exactly where every every piece goes and there's a this this thing comes into probably about 30 pieces right here um, it looks like just a couple big pieces put together but it's a bunch of different little pieces put put together and glued all together and you can't really tell that it's glued because there's not a whole lot here for example this is one this is one little piece here. This is a piece. This is a piece that goes inside. The teeth are probably the most fragile part. They just kind of flake right off. Uh, I don't know if you could see that, but there's nothing, I guess, holding those in because those are teeth, but it's, you know, they basically feel like sandpaper on the fish when it's alive. But once all the flesh is out of them and all and all that, I guess there's nothing really holding them in. So all the teeth are still there, basically. But back to the puzzle, I guess you would say here. Um, this this big gill plate is actually two gill plates. There's one on the back side of here. This is one here. This is one little piece. This is like three pieces here. And the eyeballs are super, super fragile, so if you try this, um, you got to be super, super careful. If you do it right, they will come into two pieces. You can see there's a crease here, crease here. Um, just make sure you glue that together. They're, if you do it right, they will fall apart into two pieces. Um, but the bill is, is its own piece, basically starting here 
it's kind of like a big triangle. It'll come apart um, pretty easily, actually. And then you got two pieces up here, up top. Um, just got to make sure they fit in perfectly. There's a couple pieces that kind of go in between here and under here. Um, but that's basically all the most important parts. A lot of people don't realize how sharp the swordfish's bill actually is. Um, it's not like a it's not like a sailfish or a marlin. It's actually really flat, and it is very sharp, especially when it's when it's alive and it's nice and slimy. It's basically like a knife, um, but that will that will cut you pretty good, especially when it's swinging around with a hundred pounds of fish or more attached to it. So if you guys want me to do one of these for you, uh, just leave a comment below and we'll get into contact and uh, hopefully I'll be home. I spent a lot of time in, in Panama, um, but I come back in July, so I'll have some time. But uh, I'd love to do another one of these. Now I know exactly what to do. I could probably pump it out a little bit quicker, but just wanted to be extra, extra careful with this one. Um, but if you guys want me to do one, leave a comment below and uh, we'll set you up. All right, so I changed the angle a little bit, uh, just so you can see kind of how it how it lays at, at eye level. Um, I think it looks the coolest with the bill kind of level like that. Uh, so you got this part, this is kind of a gap, it's just resting on the bottom, on the gill plates in the back there. Uh, you could also just kind of lay it on a table or a shelf, just like that. Um, or just totally weighted by the bill. So you could also hang it just on the wall with some pins. Kind of whatever you want to do, but super versatile. It'll look cool uh, no matter what, wherever you put it. So I've done a lot of cool mounts over the years. I did an 87 pound Kubera snapper, 120 pound Wahoo, some giant golden tile fish. Um, but this is definitely my favorite one. Uh, so I hope to do a few more. I'm actually driving up to Alabama tomorrow to give Colby this on my way uh, up with Megan to Iowa. Um, for some family stuff and uh, then uh, about a week and a half I'll head back to Panama got like six full weeks in a row uh, we're gonna be hammering some fish the big tunas are still there uh, Dakota and Derrida are, are catching like average 80 pounders every day they had a big striped marlin come up uh, chasing one of the tunas around um, super curious wish they would have hooked it but glad they uh, glad he'll still be around for when I get back but next episode, we take a camping trip out to the Cerro Hoya, out into the middle of nowhere, one of the coolest beaches I've ever been on, way deep in the jungle, way off grid, uh, about two hour ride from those Buzos, which uh, a lot of people say is off the grid to start with. We caught some huge tunas, big mahi mahi on the way there, uh, saw some cool wildlife, so don't miss this one. This is uh, the, one of the coolest adventures we've ever done. Yeah.